Hey, William. Hey. Dr. Foster, you don't put ABC plus A in the mix of the T. There you go. One time. I just do that. I think this is not right, but I've done this before. I guess it's. Hello. All right. Yeah. Guaranteed to have at least two people in the room. <laughs> well, look at that. We're doubling up today. I mean, four of us here. Woo. Everybody else. Is All right. Doing whatever. All right. Let's uh when your zoom. It's hard to get people here. <laughs> when they're Zoom. When they're Zoom, I know. Yeah, I know. Isn't nice. that the isn't so that the truth? Them. I mean, they, yeah, they do. Goodness, who wants to put on pants anyhow? Over oh, yeah. Me. I put on pants every day. <laughs> you guys. I mean most days at least. Oh we gosh. can't see you from here down. So so it's fine, right? Yeah. yeah Plus it's like that, know. you know, that commercial on TV where the guy's doing his his fancy jacket Zoom. <laughs> oh yeah. And he stands up and he's <laughs> just got his boxers on or whatever. We can question. Yeah. Question. Why do you <laughs> so um, Donna, can we tackle that maybe in a second? Because we're on live. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's hard to tell if we're on I know we in the room. We yes, I know. We are we are on live and we are all in the room. Um let's dive in. Um Amy, one of these days we've got to we've got to set up this two monitor thing so that we can yes. we can manage these zooms a little better when folks are not in the in the office. But for those of you who are here. Uh, we're going to do some celebrating today. Um, we've had a phenomenal start to 2022. 
Um, and we wrapped up 2021 in like the most spectacular fashion this weekend. Um, for those of you who were there, go ahead and put it in the chat. Um, um, what did you think about the event on Saturday night? Um, I will tell you from my side of the table, this was one of the easiest, most fun events I've ever hosted for our office. Um, so what do you guys think? I loved it. Yeah. The food was great. It was simple. It was casual. It yeah. was just a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, I didn't I didn't golf, but I know other people did. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Oh, it was a lot of fun. Um, I, I thought too, like we had, we got to just go right out from the, from where we were, had our, our ceremony and then just right out to golfing and it wasn't cold or anything. It was like, and it was, it was great to be able to have something, an experience for everybody to remember, um, not just the ceremony, but getting to hang out with all of our coworkers and congratulate everyone after the fact it was. Yeah. It was really fun. Yeah. Um, um, it felt like, I don't know, it felt like us, right? If mm -hmm. our group had like a vibe, I think that really nailed our vibe. what do you think, Amy? I loved it. I loved it. Um, and it was nice to see everybody just relaxed and enjoying each other and talking and, you know, just having a couple of drinks and some of us did really well golfing. Others of us did really poorly at golfing. And, but that's what made it fun, right? Yeah. 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 So. Very cool. Very, very cool. Yeah. I, I'm looking forward to doing more events like that um, with the team, either, um, either celebrating a job well done or just the opportunity to bring us together. Um, every month we have, we have an event just like that on a smaller scale inside of the market center. So this is our open house on the, um, on the last Wednesday of every, or the fourth Wednesday of every month. I don't know. I think we'll just Wednesday do last Wednesday, month, last just Wednesday case, something like that. Yeah. Check the training calendar. We'll put it on there. It's going to be right around that last Wednesday of every month. Um, open house is, is a bunch of fun. Um, last month we had a nail biting ring toss championship. <laughs> um, you know, uh, Matt Talifuse may or may not have uh, been hustling everybody. Um, the jury's still out. Um, so this month we'll bring even more um, 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 fun and camaraderie to that. And it's a great time to like come see us, say hi, network, work with agents more than ever before. We are working in virtual and hybrid environments, right? So while our paths may cross, right, um, um, on occasion, we're not as likely to bump into each other as we used to be. So we've created some of these specific opportunities like team meeting in person the second Wednesday of every month and our open house the last Wednesday of every month um, to, to facilitate the bumping into of one another. Um, and, you know, going back to the open house we had, um, I do believe that we facilitated some, some deals inside of the market center with, you know, uh, of properties that, um, that were, were on the radar and hard to pair buyers. So, I mean, there's a lot of value to those, you know, to those few chances where we get to be in person and have that free flow exchange of ideas and Zoom just can't match that. Um, so if it sounds just a little bit like I'm picking on you guys at home on Zoom, I totally am. You're missing out on opportunities for connection, camaraderie, and new business. Yet I get it. Zoom is really easy. And you may have a legitimate reason, like maybe maybe you don't want to get people sick or maybe you don't want to get sick. And I totally get that and honor it. And when it's safe for you to do so, inside of the office is the place to be. And the comp the ring tosh competition was rigged. Ricky's right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think so too. This right I now. think you practiced full that. on, full on. Um, like there are some rematches that need to happen here. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. Uh huh. Yep. It's gonna be well, there I, this yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. I heard that maybe for our next open house we were gonna be doing um, cornhole. 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 Yeah, that may happen if somebody remembers to get it out of their shed before we 
I'm getting open house. We'll do that, but I've been practicing wing toss, so we have to do that too. So we have to we do have to toss too. too. Yeah, we, we have, have to do ring toss too. Are you going to be a mama? Yeah, <laughs> I love it. You are. I love it. All right, guys. So, um, so, so let's dive in. Right, the the calendar turned. It is now February. Can you believe it's February? already February. Um, and so um, the rules this year, however, have not changed. They're the same as they've always been, right? We've got to protect our consumers and be mindful of what we're doing when we're prospecting. And we should be prospecting. We're going to talk a lot about that today. Um, but but um, keep an eye out for uh, do not call us TCPA. Follow the rules. If you're not sure what those rules are, um, you can visit this slide, which is readily available. You can see it on our Facebook page. If you go into the, um, the images, it's in resources at KW pmresources.com. Um, you can hop onto our office policy manual to get more information. And if you're still at a loss, have questions or are confused, talk to Donna or I, we can help you. Um, we can help you decide whether or not that's an activity that puts you or the market center at risk. Yet you should, you should be thinking prospecting first. Um, don't let this scare you. We just, we have a lot of rules in our industry. This is one of them. We're really good about working alongside and inside of those rules. So we can do this too. All right. So before we go on, I get a question sometimes of where do I find the do not call list or how do I find the do not call list? Can we give them some info on that? It's super easy. I mean, if you want to Google do not call list, you'll go to the U.S. government do not call registry. Um, you will then as an, as an independent contractor, you will then subscribe to your own access to the do not call registry. Um, we cannot do this for you because there are a handful of disclaimers you must, you know, um, you must agree to, you must agree to, yeah, as you register for the do not call list, but it's literally that easy. Do not call Google, do not call list. You will get like, do not call registry.gov or something like that. Right. Um, and you just follow the prompts and then you have access to the do not call registry. Perfect. Thank you. Absolutely. Great question. All right, here we are today, right? Uh, building careers worth having, businesses worth owning, lives worth living, experiences worth giving, and legacies worth leaving. Still, every every week, doing the same thing. Go on ahead, <laughs> because we are the real estate company of choice for our agents and their customers. Roll it. It is God, family, then business. Um, our Y four C two T's. You can find us on the wall. You can find us on a vast many T shirts and all over the market center. These are the rules by which we do business, right? This is this is our predetermined way that we um, treat each other. Um, and this is what's got Keller Williams, the reputation it has in the industry, right? I speak to a lot of agents, both inside and outside of our organization. Um, and, and almost unanimously, when people think of a Keller Williams agent, they think of two things. You're really, really well-trained and you're great to work with. Right. And these are the reasons why, you know, we show up as professionals. We are go ahead to the next slide. Right. Um, a technology company that provides the real estate platform. Our agents, buyers and sellers prefer. We think like a top producer, act like a trainer, consultant and focus all of our activities on service, productivity and profitability. So obviously that leads to our agents being really well trained because we've been a training company for so long. Right. Um, and also due to our Y4 C2Ts, we have a really good idea of how we can work well with agents in the field. Um, if you were at our event on Saturday night, and then you got introduced to um, culture in action, which is 52 different ways that we can actually define tangible ways we can define our Keller Williams culture. And the number one way, the very first thing is that is that we are respectful to our co-op agents, right? We build really great relationships with our co-op agents. It's the number one thing. Um, could be handy in this market as well. It sure can. <laughs> <laughs> one or two or all agents would agree that having a great relationship with the co-op on the other side can get you a lot of places right now. Go on ahead, Amy. Let's start the celebration. Um, happy birthday, February birthdays. Oh my, February. Um, happy birthday, Kelly Spencer and Linda Cena to Reem Daly, Annie Griffin, uh, to Michael Lee and Jana Johnson. Michael, you're coming up here, huh? Yeah. Happy birthday. How old Yay. are you going to be? <laughs> 41. Woo. 
Ooh, ooh, ooh. I was going to say 25. You could have just gone with that. You could have just rolled 21 for the 20th time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I could turn 21 20 times. No, that no. would be rather painful. No, I mean, somewhere around the 10th or 11th, I would get a little too old for that, don't you think? Um, <laughs> <laughs> parts but of me would it's just the first annual second annual third <laughs> annual yeah. you know yeah after a while you 12th don't annual whatever after a while you don't celebrate it oh goodness awesome. oh well happy new year to um to some of our agents and we have this phenomenal celebratory um um token of your new year for to Channy and Teresa and sorry Oops, just yeah. use the arrow like on the keyboard oh okay. yeah no worries I can I I might be missing somebody on here because I can't see all of the screen but Channy and Teresa and Lindsay Conradson and Tammy Horner and Mary Roth and Clayton Taylor and Tamara Thies and is there anyone under Tamara I don't know okay because I can't make this go away <laughs> yeah but can, can you move it if you go to more, you can. There we go. All right. Yeah, no, that was it. <laughs> All right. Happy anniversary, you guys. We are so honored to be in business with you um, and would love the opportunity to celebrate with you next time you are in the market center. Pick up your sign and your celebratory bottle of bubbly fruit juice um in either the version you would have before or after that 21st birthday um and uh um uh, and allow us to to express our gratitude for another year in business with our phenomenal work family um congratulations and welcome to the team rachel and holly and sheena if you are currently in Ignite, then you may have met one of these lovely individuals um, starting their real estate journey with us at Keller Williams. So welcome to the team, you guys. Um, anybody on Zoom? Oh, who is on Zoom today? Any of our newbies? If so, say hi in the chat. I don't think so. Here we go, guys. Let's so now. All right, bucket fills. Hey, I got to tell you what. Um, um, I've got to fill the buckets of our leadership team for um, for Saturday night's event, right? Like, um, like this was this was so phenomenal. Um, you know, everybody came together to make this a huge success for our agents. So thank you guys. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Brett. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, everybody for, um, for not just showing up and having fun, which was a very important and key pivotal piece to this, but uh, for everything that we've done to, to get to this point. Um, anybody else have a bucket to fill today? I know I feel empty handed. I didn't grab, I, I didn't grab Sir Perk Top out of my office. <laughs> I want to thank everybody who's helped me. If you're on Zoom, let's move. Can you hear me? There we go. Congratulations, Cappers, to Adrian Geyer for capping in January. And we have more celebrations as well. Um, some first, Courtney Bittner, on your first closing. Congratulations and congratulations to Lexi on your first closing as well. And we've got, I think, one more. Yeah, congratulations to Nick on your first closing. Um, and congratulations on your first listing with Bonnie Moore um, and your first listing to Jackie Sanchez. Congratulations, you guys. We had we had a lot of um, a lot of firsts, a lot of success in January. Um, and our top five listing agents, um, Harrison Baker um, and Mary Roth, <laughs> topping off um, the top five link list, followed by the distinct group, Bonnie Moore and Jackie Sanchez, um, and top five in written volume, 
Um, these are folks who were able to get their clients under contract, which is, um, you know, at some points a, a monumental feat in itself these days, right? You guys are out there making it happen. Harrison and Debbie and Shirley and Mary and Ryan, congratulations, you guys, on rounding out the top five. And then year to date, the leaderboard, um, so the top, um, uh, top 10 in volume um, for this whole entire long year of January. Um, we've got a pretty impressive group there. The distinct groups holding on to the number one spot. Yeah, you need to keep that up for the rest of the year. Let's, let's extend that there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, followed by the Geyer group, Harrison, uh, Debbie, the Ben Kenny team, uh, Megan Prey, uh, Twin Peaks Home Group, Tom Hennessy, Lindsay Conradson, and Ms. Brittany Hamrick. You guys are awesome. Congratulations. You know, it's not really golf chat, golf club. It's just um, there's so many hands in the room. I didn't want to overwhelm it. Um, <laughs> we've we've got some things going on in the market center right now. Um, so clear your calendar, pull that out, make note. Um, you may already know that Ignite is happening Monday, Tuesdays, Thursdays from 9 a.m. to noonish. Um, if you don't know or you're thinking you want to attend a session, you can find those sessions on the training calendar. Um, um, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, right? Yeah. Awesome, guys. Um, next week for our team meeting, we're going to be covering a very timely subject, right? Um, with our upcoming family reunion event, which is like a mega training event. There is more training content at family reunion than you, you really can get all year. Um, um, next week at our team meeting, we're going to be talking about how to develop your own training strategy and growth plan based on your GPS, right? So that you can stay laser focused on the things that matter the most and avoid those shiny objects that are gonna distract you from doing the things you need to do in your business. Um, um, the following uh, week and -ish, starting, starting Saturday, Sunday um, is the family reunion event. We're gonna talk a lot more about that um, but we're going to be having a watch party here in the market center on Monday for the family reunion events. Um, um, so that is Monday, the 20th ish, 21st, 20, 21st. Yes, we, Donna's got it. Yeah. That that's was my daughter's birthday. Oh, so you don't know. always have family reunion <laughs> at my daughter's birthday. Oh goodness. Well, um, well, happy birthday to Dawn. Yes. Um, she's certainly welcome to come on in and join us for family reunion on Monday morning. Uh, my Michael Lee is going to be here. So we're going to be having watch party here on, uh, on the Monday of family reunion. Um, and then that week uh, for the team meeting, um, we're going to do a little bit of a family reunion recap. We're also going to have our monthly agent mastermind. So on the 23rd, mark your calendar for that team meeting at noon on Wednesday. We'll be on Zoom. Um, um, we're going to we're going to be um, having mastermind topic to be to determined. I think I think we're going to leave this open and see what appears at at family reunion that we need to tackle together as a team on uh, on Wednesday the 23rd. But but save the date and then come into the market center that afternoon from three to five for our open house. Um, there will definitely be a ring toss championship rematch. There may or may not be a highly competitive game of, uh, cornhole. of cornhole. Um, and there most definitely will be um, um, some camaraderie, some deals happening, some agents to connect with. Um, we may have some new agents in the market center who haven't met anybody yet. We may have some guests in the market center who are considering the opportunity to work here. Um, um, and at the very, very least, um, you're guaranteed to have like, you know, three to 25 people to say hi to. So we want to see you um, on the 23rd from 3 to 5 p.m. Um, we have refreshments as well. Um, so, um, yeah, there we go. Um, keep the rest of these things on your calendar. Also, this Friday, we've got a uh, Keller Williams or uh, the KW School of Real Estate um, informational session that is on Zoom at noon on Friday. Um, here's the deal. If you have somebody who's interested in real estate school or interested in 
um, in potentially free real estate school opportunities or discount real estate school opportunities, um, have them, um, you know, get them in touch with someone in the market center with me, with Amy, with Brittany, um, and we will get them registered for the zoo. Um, family reunion, of course, starts the following weekend, uh, 18th through the 22nd, uh, followed by our open house. And then uh, turn that calendar to March. We've got some really interesting trainings coming up. March 1st, we are going to dive deep into Homeward, which is uh, an alternative financing option that can help your sellers buy before they sell. Um, so we're going to be we're going to be doing that in office on the first, and then we have a virtual training coming up on the 10th. Uh, lots more to come in March, but we wanted you to save the date for those pieces. Um, here we go, family reunion. What is that, Anna? Well, here it is. This is what it is. Hey, Carla Williams, family reunion is just a few weeks away, which means we're busy behind the scenes. Can everybody hear it on Zoom, first of all? Just want to make yeah. sure. You might ask the people on Zoom. Yeah, guys on Zoom, will you just <laughs> let us know really quick if you, did you hear the sound when we started the video? Anyone? Yes, I could hear it. Well, then it doesn't matter. Yes, I heard it. <laughs> Let's go for it. Teams getting ready to see you in Orlando. Let's take a look. How are y'all preparing for family? Oh my goodness, so many things. Um, a lot of my part though is right now just researching and making sure that we've got the right people in the right places. And we were just on the board looking at all these different networking events and how we're going to get to them all. There's so many. So you have all of these breakout sessions. And so then you try to figure out well, how many people are going to want to go to each one. And then you take that and you try to like put it onto this giant <laughs> map. So you know like which rooms to use. And before you know it, you have this amazing complex kind of world, which is what are we going to learn? How are we going to learn it? And where are we going to do it? Uh, I'm working a lot with Jason Abrams, which means mm -hmm. you start about four in the morning, you go to about four the next morning. So <laughs> I think the guy doesn't sleep. But it's really, honestly, we are working our tails off to create uh, what we think is going to be the best event ever. And that's our first time back in person in a couple of years. You name it, we're working on it. The events team has been unbelievable marketing. Legal. Everybody is, is, is pouring into this event. First of all, trying to stay healthy because I know how important this is coming up. Yeah. Uh, spending a lot of time with Gary and Jason, Mark, Matt, as we're uh, starting to prepare all our content to get ready. Mm -hmm. And then the last piece is uh, getting in shape because I know it's going to be a busy, busy, busy four plus days. You guys, go get your tickets right now. Here's the deal. We're going to limit the number of people that can physically attend because we want to do it the safest way possible. Uh, you don't want to miss out on family reunion. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to be there. You can be there. I'm going to be there. Go get your tickets right now. Yes. Go get your tickets right now. So there are still a few. Um... Hey, Kevin Williams, family. Cool. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there are still a few spots to attend in Orlando. Um, this is this is in person. There, um, uh, uh, we've got I think a few hundred tickets ish left before we hit that cap. Um, and digital tickets are available as well. So the beauty of that digital ticket is you're going to have that all of the content for a few weeks after the event. So if there's like two breakout sessions at the same time that you want to attend, um, you'll be able to attend one of them, you know, after the fact. Um, so you can go to, um, I don't know if we can go back to the slide. It's oh, you're there. Union. Yeah. Yeah. Familyreunion.kw.com, and it's on your screen there. You can go go there for more information to register. You probably got an email from me today telling you all about how fabulous it was and giving you that link as well. Um, and, and, and um, if you go to familyreunion.kw.com, the breakout sessions, the vast majority of the breakout sessions now are on the agenda. So you can dive into that and you can start really looking at, okay, what, what do I want to attend? Where do I want to spend my time? Um, and we're going to we're going to tackle some of those tough questions next week in the team meeting as well. Like what makes the most sense for me to spend my time at so that I'm not getting distracted and derailed. So um, they have also announced the keynote speaker, I believe the keynote is on uh, Monday. I think, so, yeah. yeah. Um, um, Sean Acker, who's a, um, 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 a, a, a really big deal in his field, which is positive psychology, which I've never heard of, is going to be our, um, is going to be our keynote speaker, but it, it's really interesting. And he, he talks about what positive, bleh, positive psychology is. If you go to the next slide, I think there's his, he's got a quick video. 
Hi, I'm Sean Acor. I'm the author of The Happiness Advantage and Big Potential and a happiness researcher in the field of positive psychology. I am so excited and grateful for the incredible opportunity to get to join you, to get to share this incredible research that we've been doing over the past decade. I got fascinated by looking to see if we could research not just things like depression and disorder, but if we could use psychology and science to find out why it is that some people could rise above their genetic threshold and their environment to raise their levels of happiness by changing their daily routines or changing their habits or changing the way they interacted with other people. And when we found that change was possible, what we were stunned to find is that when the human brain became happier and more positive, every single business and educational outcome we knew how to test for rose dramatically. And what we found is that when we link those two ideas together, we found something incredible. What it means is that the greatest advantage in the modern economy is a positive and engaged brain, but that we don't have to just be our genes and our environment. By changing our habits and the way that we interact with other people, we can actually reap that advantage within our lives. So I can't wait to share this research about how we can create rational optimism in the midst of the challenges and the messiness of life. How we can, in the midst of challenges, maintain the belief that our behavior matters while also taking a realistic assessment in the present. How we can then use that ra rational optimism to start bringing in positive habits into our life. I'll talk about five positive habits that we've been researching that take less than two minutes a day. But when we do them, they create huge impacts not only upon our lives, but it ripples out through our entire ecosystem around us which leads to the final conclusion, which is that happiness is not an individual sport. The greatest predictor of long-term levels of happiness is your social connection score. It's other people. It's the breadth, depth, and meaning in our social relationships. So we need to find a way of pursuing our happiness and success in an interconnected way and find a way of lighting up together in the dark, creating these virtuous cycles that allow us to not only create that rational optimism, but to sustain it. I can't wait to share this research with you, the science, how I've seen it impact my own life and case studies of how we've seen it impact people in the 50 countries that I've traveled doing this research with. And I can't wait to get to share that research with you. That's so interesting, right? I mean, so often we hear about like the abnormal psychology side, but the, the whole field of positive psychology and, and what Sean was describing, right? How every single personal and business performance metric that they could measure improved and increased when somebody's happiness score went up, right? Can you imagine that being happier is actually the key to the life you want to live? Instead of, I think so many of us put that cart before the horse, right? The life we want to live is the key to us being happy. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I'm it, this will be like my week's worth. Sean is it's awesome. Sean. Yeah, yeah, he's well, and see how his, his books are orange because the color orange facilitates motivation, encouragement, and um, drive. Like, if you think of like the orange uh, theory, the workout, the, yeah, yeah. the gym, or like orange frog trainings, it's like all positivity and happiness based. Like, yeah. he's actually got some really, really really interesting insights yeah, into so that's why I'm addicted to orange theory it's yep. the orange yeah right? <laughs> it's the orange lights so, oh boy yep um interesting very very interesting I'm yeah, I just right? noticed his books are orange too so yeah uh, yeah that's really cool I uh, yeah that's gonna be that's gonna be some some very geeky moments there and I'm looking forward to every second of it and you can definitely catch Sean um online as well if you're part of the digital family reunion experience. So um, sign up today, get your tickets, go ahead to the next slide if you want to. Um, we'll be recapping um, a little bit of family reunion at the following team meeting um, as we go into our agent mastermind. So make sure you have the save the day for a team meeting on Wednesday the 23rd. Well, um, we are going to move fast. Remember, one of the reasons for our weekly team meetings is this is where we get the opportunity to connect you, the Keller Williams agent, with all of the Keller Williams value that sometimes we just don't see. It doesn't, it doesn't cross our radar, but I promise you there's something in here that is going to set off like a light bulb or an inspiration or that you've been looking for a way to do and you didn't know it was possible. So here we go. Um, on KW um, Connect, you're going to be able to find this awesome self-study course. 
It is called Level Up Your Lead Generation. Um, and it, it walks you through a series of trainings with some of the best in the industry and action-oriented homework um, items to help you do exactly what it says, level up your lead generation. Um, um, show of hands, who closed as many deals as they wanted to in January? Who's like, that was it. That was, that was my goal. I didn't want to do any more than that. Zero hands, all the hands in Zoom, no hands in Zoom. Cool. So there might be a chance that um, that you didn't generate as many leads as you wanted to in January either, right? So if you're looking for an opportunity to level up your lead generation, that's where you can find it. Um, go ahead and roll into this one. So don't be a stranger that you soon That's me no more Cause today I made a promise to myself I love that video. And you know, I, I, I've got to tell you, I've had that experience recently. I was getting my nails done this weekend and uh, they, the gal sat down to, you know, they wrap up your nails to, to remove whatever's on them. Um, and we sat down and she was like, what are you doing today? I said, oh, I'm getting ready for my awards ceremony, right? I'm, I'm a realtor, I run a real estate brokerage and I'm celebrating my people tonight. And she says, I've always wanted to get into real estate. And then she started whispering because like she's at work, right? <laughs> I've always wanted to get into real estate. Tell you what it's like, right? And so we went all the way through the conversation. And I was like, you know what? Actually, you can get started for free. I'd love to talk to you more about it. And I left her my card, right? And so now she is getting registered for a free real estate school program that's sponsored by our office in conjunction with Keller Williams and Kaplan Real Estate, supported by a really phenomenal resource that you guys are going to be learning a lot more about over the coming weeks called KW Prep. Um, so, so, um, so we have two new resources for agents who are looking to get into real estate um, and, and for agents who are newer in the industry and are looking to, to, um, to advance their, their business and um, kind of jumpstart some of the business principles of real estate. So that is the Keller Williams School of Real Estate where we offer free and reduced cost real estate school programs through our Kaplan, our, our sponsor, through our partnership with Kaplan, who provides the real estate school stuff. Um, um, I'm like speaking in fine print. That's really fun to do. And we offer a program called KW Prep, which we're going to be rolling out to the entire market center soon. So you can the guys can all hop in and poke around and take a peek. And these are just some core like real estate business success principles that are that are um, are vital to everybody, um, you know, regardless of whether they're considering a career in real estate or they've already begun their career. And that's all available for free for all of us. So I encourage every single one of you to like keep your keep your radar out. Right. Um, think about why you got into real estate. It was, it was probably for one of five reasons, right? Because there's, there's just not that many reasons, right? Um, you had a real estate transaction that went really, really well. And you loved your realtor. And you were like, I want to do what they're doing. So you went ahead and got your real estate license, right? Who, who got in because of that? All right, it's one of the other four reasons, okay? You had a real estate transaction that was awful. And you were like, they made what? I could do better than that. Who got in for that reason? That was, that was a peace of mind. Okay. That was a peace of mind. Okay. Um, what about, um, I've got a friend, family member. I've got, I've got somebody who's in real estate and, and so I'm going to, you know, get into business with them or as a result of them. Like I, that's, that's what got me interested in real estate. And that was me, right? I was going to go work with my, my mother-in-law, her property management company. And, and that was, that was why I got into real estate. Maybe it's because you invest in real estate and you're like, well, if I got my real estate license, 
I could save the commission and cut out the middleman. Why don't I just get my real estate license? You guys have met Jake, Jake Ginger, our, our OP, Ben <coughs> agent, um, avid real estate investor. He's in that camp. That's what, how he got his license. The other reason, and I've heard this one once or twice, people are dissatisfied with where, they are, where they're at currently. And real estate just looks like a really attractive option because of something you've seen or heard, or I really love homes or HGTV or something like that, <laughs> right? Does that sound familiar? I'm not gonna lie, there was a little bit of that for me as well, yeah. right? Here's the reality. Where are these people at, right? Who knows them? I bet you do, because you're a realtor and you know everybody. They're probably in your database already. So if you had an opportunity for people inside of your database to live their dream and fulfill their vision and to, to level up, right? Um, this would be a great way to be able to do that um, and to be their partner and their sponsor as they go in through our real estate school program. So if you know anybody who fits that description or you think you have somebody in your database, by all means, reach out to us, reach out to Brittany, myself, Amy. Um, We'll get them connected. Uh, we'll get them into one of our case for informational sessions so they can get started with real estate school um, for free or, or a um, reduced cost. Um, cool. All right. What's next? There you go. I did that same thing. <laughs> yeah. All right. Go ahead. We already, I, I just covered all of, all of that. We've got some great uh, sessions coming out of KWRI very soon. Um, the color of real estate and unconscious bias in real estate. If you have not yet um, taken one of these courses, you can find them um, um, at the kwlearningcenter.com. They're offered digitally. Um, a, a very, very um, enlightening and insightful and 100% the direction we should all be headed in our real estate businesses. Uh, go ahead. All right. Um, see if this works. It didn't work for me. And in the practice round. There we go. What are the two MREA employee talent types? Cul-de-sac talent and... You got one of them. Uh, I don't remember. Dang it. Yes. It starts with a C. What's it does. One? It does. Their capacity. Capacity. Capacity so. talent. See if it'll actually work. Nope, see, it did that for me too. It's supposed to, when you hit it again, it's supposed to show you the answer. Capacity and cul-de-sac talent. Capacity talent is somebody who can not only do their job at a really high level, but they can probably do the job above them at a really high level too. They're always learning, growing, developing. They're probably gonna move up the ranks inside of your organization. Cul-de-sac talent is someone who is really, really excellent at what they do. And they are only gonna, be excellent at what they do because they don't desire to do anything else or they maybe don't have the capacity to do anything else. So they're just really gonna be good in their, in their cul-de-sac. Love that. All right, go on ahead. I know how funny it doesn't work, huh? All right, uh, trending now um, on Outfront Magazine, outfront.kw.com. If you don't have this as one of your like favorites um, on your browser, then you're missing out on something you want to. Um, so not only are there some very helpful like business building articles where they're interviewing top agents and they're getting feedback from like how the best are doing it, but there's also some public facing stuff that you can share on there. Um, um, so dive into that, but I love it this month, 15 ways to connect with your clients for Valentine's day, um, MREA models that improve your work-life balance and, um, creating schedules that stick. Um, anybody else like me create this ideal time blocked calendar and then. Then it blows up. It I blows always, up I always right follow else. mine. I don't ever mess up my calendar ever. Well, congratulations. I'm kidding. Brittany. I'm being sarcastic, <laughs> of course. So another really cool piece about Upfront is that every month they give you a fully developed social media calendar. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to think. Oh yeah, and then it's you so plug cool. it into Command, and Command plug does it, it for it's you. It's a plug and go. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, super easy. Okay. One of my favorite resources. Uh, there oh, we go. look. That's February you know? social media content. There you go. 28 ways to ignite your social media. Spark this February. Plug and play. If you can't think of what to post every day on social media, this will do it for you. Yep. There we go. 
Um, some updates and designs, check this out. Your new magazine is out, um, your winter 2022 agent branded magazine. This is beautiful. These are stunning. Uh, whether it's print or digital, digital is a phenomenal touch for your business. Easy to customize. You've got a whole bunch of holiday designs. Um, and this is super cool. Did you know you can create animation inside of designs now? So you can essentially create like gifts or whatever, yep. right? So, yep. <laughs> this is another like geekdom moment. This is super cool, super fun. Um, it, what an awesome way to take your, your digital marketing to the next level. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, let's get to some meat and potatoes here. How's the market, guys? I wish there was more listings. I know, yeah. There was zero listings last week in Highlands Ranch. Mm -hmm. Zero. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have some fun around this. We're gonna do a little bit of a little bit of an exercise. <clears throat> Amy, if you click on that, there we go. It's gonna take you to an article. Um, <coughs> check this out. I, I want to see if you guys agree or not. Um, what's that headline? Buckle up for another brutal spring housing market. What do you think? It could be. It could be looks that way although i've seen more of our agents that way listed i mean i'm reviewing in compliance now granted they're going pretty quick but people are taking listings mm -hmm. oh yeah people are taking listings yeah, are. you know um um if you go down i think there's some stats in here um dun, 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 housing supply yeah look at this um, so we are on, on a national level, 43% below pre-pandemic levels of inventory. This is on a national level. We know that Denver's special. <laughs> we don't follow the trends. We lead the trends. So, <coughs> so, so, so where do you think we are, right? Um, go ahead and head down. Um, so, so look at this. Um, as of December, there were just 1 million homes listed for sale on Zillow. We know that's the official place their homes are listed, but it doesn't really matter the source, right? Um, here's, the, here's the deal. We're comparing that with how many were there in December of 2020, and it's down 17.5%, okay? 17.5%, um, that's, a, that's a really big number. Um, okay, so go back to the, um, um, to the, to the slideshow. Here we go. Um, so check this out. There were 482 new listings in the past seven days, which is awesome. Um, it's slightly sarcastic in there. I mean, there are still listings coming on the market. So that is awesome, right? Um, 1,908 active as of today. Now, this number is not a shock or a surprise. We've been hovering right around that 2,000 mark all year. Any given day, we go up a little and then they sell. But I mean, we've got, we've got, you know, between like 1,800 and 2,200 homes on the market at any given time. Mm -hmm. um, this is a, this is a big impact, but you know what's starting to fall as a result of this? Any guess which number is going down now? New contracts? Closings. Yeah. The closing number is starting to fall. New contracts is staying, is staying, you know, is staying relatively steady, but that closing number is starting to fall. Um, could be a lot of reasons for that, but but here's here's what I think is happening. We just don't have enough homes to sell, right? If we had more houses to sell, more would be selling. So I wanted to do just a little um, a little exercise with you guys. Um, who's got a calculator handy? All right, so there was 817 closings in the last seven days. Okay, how many, how many real estate agents can potentially have a closing? 16. 16, exactly, right? Because, because there's two sides to every deal. So potentially, Amy, what's that times 16, two? 1634. Well, you just have your live person right here. Yeah. <laughs> your live calculator. <laughs> so 1,634 
um, size. Yep. All right. So let's look at this month, right? There's what four weeks in 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 just about any given month, right? So four weeks in February. So we're gonna multiply this by four weeks. So. 1,634 sides will close this week. There's four weeks this month. 65.36. So there'll be somewhere in the neighborhood of, if this trend continues, 6,500 closings this month. How do we feel about that number? It's about average what it's been. Okay. It's about what it's been. All right. Do we feel like that's a good number? High number? No. Low number? It's low. It's a low number. Yeah. Yeah. Historically, it's a low number. Very much so. Yeah. And we're going to see that in, um, um, in some things here. Do you know how many real estate agents are active in this very same MLS? Approximately. Well, the state has about 42,000. Yeah, but but and, obviously and, they're not all in the area. Uh, I believe it's in the metro area from already Colorado, somewhere around twenty four to twenty six thousand. Right. Has agents in already Colorado. Mm -hmm. So why don't we just split the difference? Say twenty five thousand. Hey, Brittany, it's twenty five thousand agents. How many agents have the potential to have no closings this month? A very large amount. 18,464. Now, really more, depending on if you have multiple transactions. Yeah. Having more than one deal. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, how often? are you selling a house to help them buy another? So you're gonna get at least two sides of that, right? Or, you know, have you ever been one of those agents who closed three or four or seven or eight in a month? Yeah, cool. At least 18,464 real estate agents in our Denver metro area will not have a closing, will not feed their families in February. Will not realize all of those great things we just talked about getting into real estate for. I don't think that's anything new. 20% of them are doing all of the business. Mm -hmm. Well, so here's the reality. This time of year, we're usually at, you know, kind of this point of the height of the activity on the market, right? We go March, April, May, June, and it starts to level out, right? This year, I mean, if inventory doesn't start rising significantly, you know, here's my question. Is there going to be that boom that feeds the other agents, right? That feeds everybody else. And just because maybe this isn't different than it was last month or the month before that or the month before that, still stakes, doesn't it? So get, go get in the stakes and figure out how to. You didn't, yeah. you didn't get in this business to become one of those people. No. Right? Right? And I talk to agents all the time who at the bare minimum want to sell one house a month. One house a month. If I sold one house a month, right, all the cards would line up. I'd stay in business. I wouldn't have to go get a job again, right? I wouldn't have to go back to the nail salon, right? So here's my question. If your livelihood were depending on it, if February were going by and you didn't have a closing and you were and you just refused to be one of these people for March, what could you do today to go out and get a piece of business? What would be on your list? Lead gen. Lead gen. What kind of lead gen, Donna? Like specifically, what could you do today to go get a piece of today business? Well, I would be picking up the telephone and seeing how former clients are doing. What are they doing? How do you think you know? What, how's your family? Those types of things. What okay. are you doing for things? For, uh, You'd be calling your <coughs> clients. Yeah, call your clients. You'd be surprised how many people or what you get out of that batch of people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Share this article with them that I just shared with you guys. 
right? Help them see that this is still a really incredible time to sell. Yes, and right? take, take a class like from Patrick mm -hmm. that has the resources to help your clients get from point A to point B. Yes, yep. That's very, very big. Have a right full now. tool belt, mm -hmm. right? Here's what I would say. Call your client now, fill your tool belt later. Yeah. Right. Don't wait. Don't wait till you have a full tool belt to call your client. Call you them really today. Should, that should be the first thing. Get to know your client base. How many people are you going to call a day? Call a day. How many do you call a day? And it should be every single day, Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? How are you doing it? Set up. Write your conversations out if you need to. But be focused and make sure your calls have a purpose. Absolutely. And I, I agree. And that would be one of my number one activities. Absolutely. If I were looking for a piece of business today, I would be talking to all of my past clients today. What else could I be doing if I were looking for a piece of business today? Go ahead and throw media. it in the chat too, if you have ideas at home. Social media. Social media. Okay. So you could be doing something aggressive on social media that creates a call to action that brings you a piece of business today. You should go and make sure you set up your social media in command. And I'm not the techie in the office, but I'm telling you that their command has so many things in there that you could focus and put on automatic that you should be doing. Absolutely. I love that. And I agree wholeheartedly with you, Donna, right? Because every agent should be looking for two pieces of business all the time, yes. every single day right? We should be looking for right now business and we should be looking for tomorrow business for today business and tomorrow business and using command to schedule those pieces out and create a steady social media presence is going to help you build steady tomorrow business. And if I were looking for today business, I would get super aggressive with my social media campaign. I wouldn't be scheduling things through command. I would be actively on there doing make like some sort of bold 100 um, reverse bold 100 with a call to action in there. I would be offering something with an immediate risk for immediate response, right? To get people into conversation with them about the opportunity to list their house with me today. Right. What do we got in the chat? They're at a dinner party for some close friends for the opportunity to talk about your goals and ask what theirs are. I love Thank. that. I love that. Hey, so so we would get face to face with our with our people. We would have some sort of event that gets us face to face with our people. Um, what else? What else could we do today to take a listing to get a piece of business? Expires. How come they're expiring? The market's so hot. They're still for sale by owners and expire. Okay. Are you on the gold star? <laughs> yeah. I wish I had gold stars. That's a great idea. You know, 76 properties expired in the last seven days. Yeah. How many is that per day? Almost 11. Mm -hmm. Okay. Colin expired. There you go. Show sure up. hasn't been relisted, guys, though. <laughs> Just yeah. saying. What I'm else? What else for sale by owners are still out there too. For oh, sale yeah. by owners. They're still leaving money on the table without an agent, even as crazy as things are right mm -hmm. now. Visit neighbors, local business owners, and create opportunities. Yeah. Nick. All right. Hey, Nick. Nick knows the key to massive action is to get face and face to face, right? Yeah. Coaching classes more than anything else. Well, so what else could you do, right? Um, could you door knock a neighborhood and find a piece of business today? Yep. Yeah. Knock on enough doors with the right conversations. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. Could you hold an open house today that brought you yep. a piece of business? Yep. Yeah. Sure. Could you hold it at like three o'clock right down the street from the school so that everybody who's be. getting out of school comes to your open house? Yeah, it doesn't have to be Saturday or Sunday. It can be it any day or any afternoon that you feel is going to have traffic come through. 100%. Anytime. You know, I was listening to, I don't know if you guys know who um, Cody Gibson is, 
um, mega, mega, mega agent. His team sells, sells thousands of homes a year. He's a, a coach, a bold coach, a big leader in KW. He leads the uh, Keller Williams expansion program. Cody Gibson got his start. Instead of paying for a desk, he held open houses. And when he had work to do, he would do it at an open house. And the worst thing that happened was nobody would come in and he would be able to get his work done. But the best thing would that would happen was, I mean, he had a sign in front. He was open, ready to go on a Tuesday at like 10 o'clock in the morning. If he had work to do, he'd be doing it in an open house. Well, somebody could be strolling in at 10 o'clock on a Tuesday morning. And do you think they're probably a pretty serious buyer if they're out there at 10 o'clock on a Tuesday morning? Probably pretty much. Right? I'd say so. There's a lot of ways to do this, guys. What do these things have in common? They're talking to people. They're talking to people. I love that. What are we missing on the list before I dive into this? What else? I mean, honestly, you could be doing just about anything in an aggressive and proactive manner and go get a piece of business. Mm -hmm. Okay. These are all prospecting based. So I like to think of it a couple of ways, right? You are hunting or you are farming, right? And hunting is a, an aggressive activity that you have control over, right? You go find prey, hunt them down, go get the prey. <laughs> Yeah, you've got one. Yeah, I've got one. I've got a, actually, I've got a text I send out every January and every July through command. It just reintroduces who I am. How likely are you to move this year? It has some answers. And then I have a fun answer for the last one saying, I'm not going to move, but let's go grab a burger. Um, I get responses every time I send that out. So you follow up on your pipeline. Yeah. You're great. And just, Shocker. And just like database in general. So anyway, I'll, I mean, if anybody wants that, Text, I'll share that simple text. You can do it through your phone or do it through your command. I love control. that. I love, love, love that. Um, and you're you're active, you're going out to find your dinner, right? You're not waiting for your dinner to come to you. Um, it that's the key. Um, what you're going to see coming soon are um are a lot more conversations around ways we can do this. If you haven't yet picked up one of these. Um, this is Shift by Gary Keller and and um, and, and all right and and the clan. Um, this book was written during the um, the the recession of of 08, 09, right? The market when it last time with the bubble and all of those things and business changed, and we had to shift the way we did things. And I get the privilege of revisiting this book very recently. And you know what's so funny? It's exactly like what's happening now in the market, right? Back then, there were like no buyers and all of the sellers, right? Right now, we've got all of the buyers and no sellers. So I encourage you to read this book. In your head, just change most of the buyer words to seller and do what they say to do. Right, the number one message I the biggest takeaway for me out of this entire volume is you have to shift to being prospecting based and marketing enhanced. This is the most highly skilled market we may ever see in our careers. As we already discovered, the vast majority of agents. are not going to find their dinner. We get the opportunity to get ahead of this. Here's the other thing. No one else is having this conversation right now either. You know what they're talking about? It's gonna be another great spring market. And it's right, okay. prices are gonna go up another 16%. And, um, and best year ever. Best. Last year might've been your best year ever. And if you rest on those laurels, you're going to get out of real estate this year because it's going to get hard unless you shift your mindset and you start going to find your dinner. So 
All right, last plug. If you haven't registered yet for Family Reunion, you're going to learn all of the hunting tools as well. I guarantee you this is not a conversation we're having just right here in Denver. This needs to happen on a large scale and number one training organization in the world. We're going to teach how to do this at the highest level possible. So I've already taken a look at the agenda. There are definitely some hunting sessions on there. If you don't feel like you're a good hunter or if you got into real estate during the farming period and you're used to just going to the grocery store to pick up your dinner, well, then you're going to need to learn how to hunt. And if you need to learn how to hunt, that is the best place to start. So register for family reunion, do all of those fun things, pick up, please. If you, if it's your anniversary this month, pick up your anniversary gift. We'd love to see you shake your hand and celebrate with you. Um, what else? What else do we got before we wrap up today? Amy? Our lovely sponsor. Robert. There we go. All right. Keep going. I got a slide ready to go for you. Oh, you're all set. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. That is me. That is you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so yeah, I'm Robert Bird. I'm the local Fidelity National Home Warranty Representative. And one of the things that uh, I'm going to do today is I'm going to take a portion of what I do. I teach a um, two-hour CE accredited course by the state on home warranty, and it's a generic type course, so to speak, if I get into details and I get into fidelity, but one of the things I think that people um, really need to know about home warranties is dollar limits. So what I mean by dollar limits is every home warranty company pays a certain amount for, say, a dishwasher replacement or uh, excuse me, or a heater replacement. But out here in Colorado, the home warranties that get purchased, 90% of them are the agents purchasing those warranties. And the biggest problem is a lot of times you don't know, if, unless you dig into the details of a home warranty, what they cover. So you're buying this for your, cost, your client in hopes they have a good experience. So in reality, a lot of home warranty companies, when you look at their brochures, they don't really come out right and say, here's what we cover if a, we need to replace a heater. So I'm just going to give you some examples of how that works. <coughs> um, for example, say a heater does need to be replaced. A lot of home warranty companies will, will limit that to $2,000, maybe $3,000 for that heater to be replaced. And as you know, it can run more than that. But that's not but the end of it. Just as an example with Fidelity, our standard policy covers, there's no dollar limit for replacement of the heater. But that's not the whole picture because no home warranty company pays for a code upgrade. A heater's been there for 20, 25 years. There's code upgrades that need to happen. And there's extra costs when, with a home warranty. It's, it, uh, somebody gets a home warranty, that doesn't mean that they're not going to ever have any out-of-pocket costs. And that's expectations. Home warranty companies get hit with that because they have a home warranty. They call in, they pay their service fee, and they think that's it. But if you're having a heater replaced, which is one of the number one reasons why you, you know, big ticket items is why you want to get a home warranty. It's not the plumbing stoppages and this stuff. It's the big ticket items. So know what the company covers is my point. So as an example, with specifically with Fidelity, no, no dollar limit for ACs, furnace, or water heater for the unit itself. Under the standard plan, the customer will be responsible for um, the hallway, the old equipment, code upgrades, and any modifications. And so for a heater, that can run five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars because of the code upgrades and different things that have to happen. So that's an example of, so we're going to pay for the unit, no problem. And the issue is, is that if you pick the standard plan, that's going to be the you know, customer's going to have some out-of-pocket costs. And then other plans, for example, our best plan, at $650 for a single-family residence, you're going to get $1,250 towards code upgrades and modifications. That means that if they do have a big ticket item replaced, they're probably not going to have hardly any out-of-pocket costs for that big ticket item. So that's... You know, to me, it's 
knowing if you whatever home company home warranty company you work for ask them what their dollar limits are in particular let's go into the kitchen in the kitchen there's a very large home warranty company out here that just pays six hundred dollars for re repair replacement or in diagnosis for it, everything in the kitchen right a dishwasher cooktop extra for double oven um six hundred dollars is not going to get you an appliance that means your customer is coming out of pocket. And that's not uncommon. There's another company out here that just maxes it out for $3,000 aggregate. Sounds like a lot. One refrigerator going out and you're, you're halfway through that or more. And then you don't have any coverage. So how does that compare to Fidelity? We pay $3,500 diagnosis, repair, or replacement for each one of those appliances in the kitchen. That's our dollar limit is $3,500 each doesn't mean they get to upgrade. It means that if they do have some a, a good dishwasher, a cooktop, a range that actually is, you know, worth something is it's I mean, or higher end, we're going to be able to meet that. And there's a way within our product to be able to double that. So, and we're one of the few companies that does look at, you know, a Viking that's not commercial grade, but still for residential. We look at the higher end stuff and we will, we will cover those also. That's, that's huge. And the last thing is the refrigerator. This is just mind boggling, but $750 for a refrigerator is this other company. They're very well known out here, but that's what they pay for a refrigerator replacement. We go to $5,000. It's just, all I'm just trying to get you to look at is if you wanna purchase your customer a home warranty, make sure that the dollar limits are there and that they're gonna have a good experience from that standpoint. So I'm just giving you the tools to be able to, if you work with another company, ask them what they are, ask them if they cover code upgrades, ask them if they cover modifications when they replace these big ticket items. The reason I bring that up is because we do. I can tell you, because I teach this course, I have to know everybody's, you know, it, it, coverages and you got to dig into the details into their it's not up front most of the time in ours it's on page 12 we list them all um so i know that we compare very very well for the other companies the last thing is everybody here everybody here uh, somebody complaining of home warranty using it and having an issue with something not a fast response and so forth set the expectation because home warranty is not retail when you get a heater replaced it might take a week that might take a week when it's 10 degrees outside because they go through the process. They have to be able to say, here's the bid. This is what we're going to do to replace it. Here's what you're covered with the customer. Are you agreeing to these out of pocket costs? They have to agree to it and then everything goes forward. So I am here locally, but I like to be very involved into all the transactions. So I send a welcome email. If you're using me, I'll send a welcome email to your buyer after they close. Let them know about the warranty, how they can, you know, talk to me, you know, on the weekends, uh, rekey option, whatever it might be. I also have a packet that I, I give the agents that they can leave with them right there at the table and say, I'm gifting you this warranty. And there's a lot of great information. So anyway, that's it. If you guys have any questions? I'm happy to answer them, but that's me. Thank you. That's Thank awesome. You. Thank you for that. And we've got we've got your information here. We're going to take um, 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 Amy. I'll have um, some extras of your brochures and cards and things like that. So we'll have them in the office the next time you're you're in. If you're going to be here for open house or um, or whatever, for those of you who are at home, um, you can definitely get it. And then um, um, we'll get your contact information and we'll put it up on the Facebook page so that everybody has it as well. Well, thank you. Awesome. Appreciate that. Thank you so Thank much, you. Robert. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Absolutely. And hey, if you're here in the building, um, you get lunch. Yeah, Robert. Sure. Robert brought lunch for us today. So, um, yeah, I know. I guess we'll see you next time. <laughs> Have a great <laughs> afternoon, everybody. Thank you. Oops. They really are. Thank you. I have a